Bulls uh, at the half, but Prince kind of has everything hitting the fan, and, and I know that there's not only the Dark Lord's evil forces, but then there's all these raging hormones, and there's quite a lot of different things going on here for, for, for all the actors to deal with. I don't know whether that was just a wonderful treat or whether it was quite daunting. No, it was a bit of a treat, actually. I mean, it was, it, you know, it was... I always get nervous when I approach one of the films because it always seems like there's, there's always going to be so much to do. And, and you have to be spot on in every scene, more or less, because there's very little let up from the fans in terms of what they want and what they ask of you. And, what, and they're right to do so. Because, you know, we've been doing this ten years now, we should be good at it. And we are, you know, and I think we're very, very proficient. Um, it, particularly, you know, David, since David's come on, the, the standards have just, uh, particularly performance-wise, uh, have gone up, you know, um, no end, I think. Um, I think, in this, you know, this film is a harder book to make into a film. Um, because it is, it's, it's the sixth book is, is in many ways is a lead up to the seventh. However, I think what David did brilliantly was to really bring out the comedy of the book, which all the romance stuff is very, very funny. Uh, particularly all the stuff between Ron and Lavender is all it genuinely makes me laugh. And I've never been really like there's not not many jokes in Harry Potter films will really make me laugh. But Rupert doing that, and also Rupert doing what I'm now referring to as his Buster Keaton bit on the broomstick, where, I mean, he's just brilliant at all that stuff. There is that sense now that you say ten years, it's half your life, and, and we're, you're now on, on, on the, the Deathly Hollows, and that will be out in November 2010, and, and the second part in July 2011. It's kind of like the, the end, I don't know whether you kind of brace yourself for the notion that it will be goodbye, this is the last time you're going to start a film, this is the last time you'll go through the process, yeah. and I don't know whether there's a part of you is, is almost, you know, a, a little bit of kind of a mixed emotion but dread, I'm sure, as well. It, it'll be a totally different life when you finish. It will be. I mean, also, I don't think... I mean, it'll be very, it will be very strange. Very strange. I mean, I don't... And I can't accurately predict how I'll react to not having it anymore. Um, I like to think I'll be in some way excited because it means I don't have to worry about my availability for things two years down the line. Um, so there's that aspect to it. But equally... I will be very sad because it's so much of my life and so much of my friends and everything about my teenage years will be forever, you know, yoked to Harry Potter and to these films and every frame that I watch them in, of the films in the future will call me back immediately to a moment in my teenage years, which will be very weird. That notion at the beginning of the movie, Harry has the... Uh the kind of rare experience where this rather attractive young waitress, Ella, Ella Rica Gallagher, I think. Uh, Ella Rica, yeah. Yeah, yeah I need a phone number, actually. She's a really uh, good-looking woman. But she's that a lovely, notion, she's lovely, yeah. But that notion, she's, uh, she says, who's Harry Potter? And I'm guessing for you, that's a rare occurrence because that notion that probably just every corner of the, of the globe, people are aware of who Harry Potter is and by extension who you are. I mean, is it, is it a luxury you ever get that people don't actually recognise you? Is it something that you... you oh, yeah, it's something, whenever I get it, I play on it. <laughs> Fantastically. Occasionally I'll be in a cab. I'll just make up another life. I'll make up an entire other story, and it is great fun. And um, so there's that, which is quite fun. But, and, but that happens very rarely. And I was I actually mentioned it in, in, in an interview recently, the fact that I had a guy taught me bass guitar for a year and a half, and he never knew who I was. And it was very, he was, uh, either he had absolutely no idea who I was, or he was the coolest man alive, he really just didn't care. Basically, uh, cool thing. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. I'm thinking maybe he just, but he was so into his music, I, I could easily believe that he was, he had been too busy, you know, analysing Jaco Pastorius, his bass playing for the last 30 years of his life, that he would never even have heard of Harry Potter. Check, just ask him what year it is. If he says it's the 90s, then you know he just hasn't heard <laughs> yeah. He could be living <coughs> yeah. in a totally different time frame. recently added weather report on the record. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, Birdland, Heavy Weather's the best one, that, that album of a weather report. If he's but I see, stuff. I haven't got, he, he hasn't given me any, he just, right, he just he tried to teach me it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was uh, I should say that, that the one thing Dumbledore says as well in this is that there, there's, there's no light without the dark, and, and mm. that sense that for you and for, for Rupert and for Emma, it's been a huge amount of light given the, the life that you've had on the back of this, a huge amount of you know attention, but also I'm guessing a lot of joy just making these films and, and seeing the effect yeah. you have on people. But I'm guessing there has to be a little bit of dark as well. I don't know whether that's sort of just the, the, the hard work involved, whether there's a side to it that you know the fame brings a certain degree of of uh, like difficulty because you just can't have a light that is private. Um, there there is a certain amount of that, and it is a very you know, and it's a fine line. To to also to talk about it in interviews because by the same token, a lot of people that will be watching this, the last thing they want to see is a celebrity whinging. Everyone hates that. I hate that. Um, there are there are tricky moments, um, and you do sometimes find yourself in situations which you would not be in were it not for being in Harry Potter or being famous or whatever. 
but all of that is so outweighed by the joy of being on set because the premieres and stuff that's all something else that's for me that is it's fine and it's fun and weird and mad but it's it's just the thing whereas filming is what matters to me and what I love doing and where I want to be for as long as I can remain there and and so everything else whenever it is all you know whenever it does feel a bit weird to to be me or in, in a certain situation I, I I can just say to myself yes but the thing you would have to give up to get out of this would be, you know, I, could, I just couldn't give it up. I, I like it too much. I love it. Rock and roll. Let me give him the friendly finger. Very nice to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>